Our beloved, here we go. That'll, that'll work. All right. You don't need to see me. You just need to hear me. Anyway. All right. So here we go. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. I heard the Lord saying, there has been a, a stone laid that the builders have rejected, and he has become the cornerstone. I heard the Lord saying, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. When you have a cornerstone of a building, beloved, you got that stone that holds the foundation together, that holds the, it's the, it's the support of the building. It's a support of the building, if you will. And I heard Abba saying, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, the stone that the builders have rejected. The Bible says he was despised. He was what? Outcast. He was rejected. He was not esteemed by who? By the world, by mankind, by humans. He was not esteemed by mankind, by the world, and by humans. But what? It pleased the Lord, which means it didn't matter if he was rejected, despised, all of that. It pleased God that what? That he should give his soul up for an offering. Why? Because Jesus is the blameless one. So, you see, when God does something, he doesn't do it halfway. He doesn't um, start, like if we're building a building... He doesn't do like, okay, let's just put marshmallows for the foundation. We're going to build a house on that. He does it in such a way, beloved, that when it's done, when it's from start to completion, because he who begun a good work will be faithful to bring it to completion until the glorious day of Jesus Christ. So we, he doesn't put up marshmallows. He doesn't put up marshmallows to build a building, to lay a foundation. He laid it on his holiness. He laid it on his blamelessness. He laid it on his sovereignty. He laid it on his truth. And all of those things, holiness, sovereignty, truth, uh, blamelessness, it's all him. When God does something, he doesn't do it halfway. He doesn't do a quick hurry down kind of thing. And then, you know, it's like when you're done, like a stack of cards, your house is going to come crashing down. When God does something, he does it in order. He's a God of order. He loves order. He orders the footsteps of who? A righteous man. He orders the footsteps of a righteous man. Those who are seeking the face of Yahweh Jesus. Those who want to hear his words. Those who want to follow what he's saying, his directions. He follow. He orders the footsteps of a righteous man. Now, when God does something, when he builds something, or when he makes... Okay, so that's the friend there, so I can just... Okay. So it's me talking, see? Okay, hi. Okay, so when God does something, he does it with precision, perfection, and a righteous purpose. When God does something, when Yahweh Jesus does something, beloved, there is no question about it that he has done it. That's why he loves when the things that he uses to do whatever glorious thing he's doing, he loves that it's um, it's simple. It's unesteemed. It's rejected. It's not lifted up in the eyes of men. Because then his glory can come forth. His glory will shine bright in the thing. It says that God uses the foolish things of this world to confound those who received a degree and said thank you for limited knowledge. And I passed it. Yay. Okay. 
God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Those who think they got everything figured out. Those who think that they, they got it all figured out, and because generation upon generations have been following the routine, they say, yeah, we got it. We build our house on marshmallows, and when it starts to um, crumble or melt, like in the hot sun that we're getting these days in the book of Revelations, right? When, when the marshmallows start to melt, we take some pretzels and we pop it up with that. We just prop it up with marshmallows and pretzels. And we just keep propping it, propping it, propping it until the whole thing crashes down. So this house that's being built, that's why Abba said, Peter, upon this rock, I built my church. This rock, Jesus. Upon this rock, upon your faith, upon this rock, faith comes from who? From God. Faith, com faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. He is the word. Faith is him. That's why it pleases him. It comes from him. Only what comes from him can please him. Only what comes from him can please him. Only what is in his standard and in his order can please him. He has a standard that you have to pass. He has an order that you have to follow. He has ways and means that he has positioned and directed things to be brought into a glorious um, way. It, it's going to be in a beautiful uh, revelation. It's when it's complete, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be glorious the way that he presents things. When God does something, when Yahweh, Jesus, does something, what does he do? He starts from scratch. Because out of his glorious majesty, out of his sovereignty, out of his boundlessness and limitless, limit, limitlessness of God, as God, he brings forth the thing. When he builds a foundation, it don't matter if the Titanic was placed on it, it will not sink. It will not, that foundation that he's laid will not fall. When you search from beginning to end, you see brick upon brick upon brick upon brick upon brick. You see the cement laid. You see it in stone. You see it solidified then. When God does something, he doesn't, he doesn't leave it to chance because he's holy God. He's the truth. He cannot lie. Mm -mm. Okay. He cannot lie. It is not in him to lie. If he lies, then he would cease to be God, right? But listen, no, he's God, he's God all by himself. He's God. He is the Abba Father. And everything that he does has to be in a couple of ways. It has to be righteous for a righteous purpose. It has to be for his glory. It has to be for the good of those he loves. Every single thing that the Bible tells us about him has to be held in high standard. So when God builds a house, beloved, he doesn't do a halfway kind of thing. He doesn't do a... And, and let the house come crashing down. He orders the footsteps of a righteous man. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you how to do it, but you got to listen. The Bible says that the cornerstone, let me find it. I think it's an ox. Ox 4, is it? Mm -hmm. We're going to read, take it up in verse 10. Are you ready? Ox 4, verse 10. Let, and then let this be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who? Not Atla, not Buuda, not Ka'ali, not Shiva, or Durga, Burga, whatever. No, no, none of those. It says, 
It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. That this man stands before you healed. They wanted to know who did it. Who did it? And now he's, he's, begin, he's, he's now going to tell them why they don't believe it. This Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. Hmm. Builders of what? Builders of their faith. Builders of their religion. Builders of their belief. This Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, Jesus, whom you builders rejected. Whatever you built with, you rejected him. You left him out. He didn't fit well with the other uh, materials that you used. So you just left him out. He didn't fit in with those whom you agreed with to build a house. So you left him out. This Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. Who has become the cornerstone? You see, the cornerstone is in the mid. In the, it, it's like the thing that holds the thing up. It's like the thing that holds everything together. The Bible tells us very plainly. It says, "All things hold together, or are held together, in His what? In His function, in His perfect being. In who? In Christ Jesus, in God." All things hold together in him. Look what it says. This Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. So you might have had a belief system, false belief system, or a religion, reintroduction of legion to humans. You might have built up something like a tradition, trading your souls for the Religion of the world. Yes, Okay, that's a new one. Traditions. Trading your soul for the religions of the world. Hmm. Okay. So you might have had this false belief system or religion or traditions that are just continuing through generations on generations on generations on generations on generations on generations, on generations, on generations and... Nobody's saying anything. Nah, why? Because they already built up their false belief system. And they rejected Jesus, so they left him out. And if they didn't leave him out, you know what they did? Let me tell you what they did. They took him, the God of glory, and they mingled it with some demons and some deities. They mingled them together. And they said, oh, that's one. So this Jesus is the stone you builders of your false a belief system of religious and traditional false belief systems. You rejected. This Jesus is the stone that you rejected to do that. Who has become the cornerstone? Oh, oh. Remember, God does things in order. He does things in order. He doesn't say, well, huh, I'm going to put an orange here and an apple there and a watermelon there and I'm just going to put a house on it. When God does something, He does it with precision, goodness, holiness, righteousness, justice, all of these things. When you look for the, when you see, someone can go with a magnifying glass and be like, I'm looking for a mistake, an error, something. And they can't find a thing because the builder that built it ha has precision. He has precision in holiness, precision in righteousness. You can't find one thing that's blaming or blameful. Blameful on him. Is that a word? Blameful? No. You can't find one thing that is wrong. With what he's done. 
His project from beginning to end is always in perfection. Always. So, so they saw this guy healed, right? And you see how they answered him in Acts 4. Then let us be known to you all. Then let us be known to all of you and all the people of Israel. We know that a lot of people in Israel have rejected Jesus Christ as Savior, right? And um, done their own thing. Pharisees, Sanhedrin, chief elders. Mm. That's why they'd be sacrificing the red heifer, like if, uh, you know, like if that could save them. Anyway. Then let us, let us be known to all of you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. You crucified him because the way he was building the foundation. Remember how he did that? He walked around all the people and he taught them that love is what reigns in heaven. That's why you'll find those who reject him, reject love. Mm. And God is love. Mm. Agape. I'm not talking sexual or family, filio or erotica. I'm talking agape. So, you you crucified. Because he broke down the titles, he broke down the statues, he broke down all the, the preconceived notions of what a foundation is supposed to be. And he broke down all their religions and all their traditions and heaping burdens on people's shoulders that they would not enter into the kingdom of heaven. He broke it down. You say you're blind guides, you Pharisees, woe unto you. You see, when he did that, he offended them. He kind of showed people, this is what they're doing. So, it says, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Hmm. That this man stands before you healed. So, he's risen. What would the Savior do? Oh, yeah. Come and conquer and die and be lifted to life again. But if you're looking with your, and you're not looking with your position towards God, you never find it. You'll never find it. So it says, this Jesus is the stone you build us of fake belief systems, religions, traditions, Trade into religion of your souls. It says, This Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Like it or not, this is the way that God made it. Like it or not, you might reject him because he's offending you by the truth. But I say unto you, it's rather the offense comes by um, comes comes from uh, men than it come from God. When the of when you offend God, let me say it like this: When you offend God, it's a terrible thing. When you offend Jesus, you offend God, because He is God. But when you offend men and mankind by choosing God, hey. That's not a terrible thing. You're choosing the Father. You're choosing heaven. You're choosing the way that he laid things. Let's read the other part. Salvation. What? Okay, so now we know what the foundation is. Eh? Salvation exists in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven. None. Given to men or mankind, by which we must be saved. So take that and chew on it now, because the way that they built up the false belief systems for everybody to believe and just jump in and follow, like if their brains are shucking out of their heads, you know, it just fell out. Oh, there it goes. 
And they left Jesus out with all his preaching, with all his teaching of love, ruling and reigning in heaven and in our hearts and the kingdom of heaven inside. We're looking, oh, where is it? Where is it? When you leave all of that out, what do you got? You might as well have put down some bricks and not thrown cement or gravel in it. You might as well have made some hollow pillars. You might as well have made a very weak foundation that when you start to build a real house, it'll come crashing down. Our Jesus said it like this. The wise man and a foolish man built their houses. The wise man built his house on the rock. Jesus is what? The rock of our foundation. The wise man built his house on the rock. His one is sturdy. His one is, uh, his house is on a firm foundation. His house is not going to fall. The Bible says, when the winds and the waves came, when the storms and trials of life came, the one who built his house on the rock was not moved. Nobody could say, hey, follow this and I'll, we'll, we'll do this and hey, do that and we'll give you that and we'll help you with this and we we'll do And um, his faith was on the rock. His faith was on Jesus Christ, which means that he never sold out. He never sold his soul to obtain anything. Salvation exists in no one else. So when the winds and the waves came and began to beat upon that house, you know, like imagine it's at a seashore or something, and imagine it's a tsunami, and imagine that thing just come, just crashed on it. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. The house stood. This is the wise man that built his house on Jesus Christ, built his faith on Jesus Christ, built himself on Jesus Christ. That in the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of fires, in the midst of everything that you could possibly go through and walk through in your life, beloved, you never leave the Lord. You never leave Jesus because you already are solid in the faith. You're solid. You're built upon the rock. Doesn't matter how much they shake. Doesn't matter. You don't move from the foundation. They can move if they want to. They can go with all their, their bribery and their whatever. They can leave, but you don't leave. You don't stop confessing that Jesus Christ is your Savior and your God, and you walk the talk. You're the hero and the doer. You're the one that chooses him no matter what. So the wise man is likened unto a man that built his house on the rock. The foolish man. Hmm. The foolish man is like those carefree. Whee! The foolish man is the man who built his house on the sand. A rock can be formed with the right minerals and stuff mixing into that sand and something to harden it, like the water. Over time, it will become a rock. But the foolish man built his house on the sand, people. Everything that he put down there just falls through his hands. Shh. Oops. So if he managed, because I leave it to your imagination to um, see that foolish man build his house on the sand, that if there is strong enough wind, the sand would just blow away. Or... If there was a tsunami, it just wash away. Or 
It, you get the point. An earthquake would just shake it out. The wise man built his house on the rock, but the foolish man built his house on the sand. If he, it says, when the winds and the waves came, and they beat upon the house that the foolish man built, it came crashing down. Some, some people build their lives on the sand. False belief systems, religions, traditions. And they say, not a problem because we're happy. For how long? Some suffer each other just to prove their point. It is that sad. Some suffer each other and they say, oh, we're not crumbling. We're just a little cracked. I've seen people do this. I've seen people who are crumbling. Their lives are falling apart. And then they're just like, nah, we're good. We're good. We're going to smile, grin, and bear it because our pride is more. And they won't admit that the loveliness from Jesus, the sovereignty, the gentleness, the purity, the holiness. They won't admit that all these things that make the cornerstone, remember he is the cornerstone, so all these things are him. They won't admit that he's what's needed. They won't. Because the cornerstone was rejected. The cornerstone was cast off. So the wise man remained with his house. He remained with his house intact because he's on the rock. Which means that whatever life threw at him, he survived. And he didn't just survive any old how. He didn't go from being a Christ follower to some Buddhist or some Muslim or some Hindu or, or some Jehovah wit or whatever. He never, he never moved because his faith is on the rock. The Bible tells us that he who faints in the day of what? What is it? adversity his strength is small this should not surprise you because jesus christ is the almighty you got all strength needed all might needed almighty where did he say that read the book of revelations the almighty who was and is and is to come So, the wise man stood strong, but the foolish man, you know what happened to him? He fell apart. He fell apart and went into every direction. He wanted to go with some hookers, he went with some hookers. He wanted to go um, do some drugs, went and did some drugs. He wanted to end a man's life, he did that. He wanted to... Uh, Take bribery and usury, he did that. He wanted to jump in another religion, he did that. He just jumping like fish out of water, out of the fishbowl, beating up, and then trying to jump in the next little puddle of water, and then he jumped and again, and he jumped and he jumped, and he doesn't even have a foundation lead. He doesn't have anything to hold to. He has no hope. Salvation exists in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given unto any man by which we must be saved what shall it profit a man to build up a whole palace and an empire and get, and lose his soul at the end of um, of it all do you know one second in hell will make 
a soul regret living a lifetime without Jesus? One second. And that one second is good for regret. What about the rest of eternity there? So Jesus, it's warm. You're a consumer fire and I love you. It's really hot. So Jesus is the cornerstone. He's the one that when you build with him, people can circumspect your life and not find anything wrong. They can examine your life with a magnifying glass, a microscope, whatever, and they'll never find anything else but Christ. Your choices are Jesus. The things that you went through, how did you come out? Are you still standing a Christian? Are you half of something? You're half a Hindu, half a Christian, half a Muslim, half a Christian, half a Buddhist, half a Christian, half Catholic, half Hindu. You, you're not sure. You, you, you confuse altogether. What? No. When they circumspect and they examine, they find that those who are wise in Yahweh, Jesus Christ, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's how you get a wise man to begin with. If you don't have the fear of the Lord, you're walking foolishly. Look at the time, 12-12. Check that in the Hebrew strongest and send it to me. If you're not walking, it's 12-12 p.m. If you're not walking in the fear of God, you're not a wise person. Because which man knows his hour of departing? Who knows the hour that he would leave this earth? None of us. And you don't have to be in a murder or you don't have to be in an accident or uh, to die. You could just simply not wake up the next time you go to bed. You could uh, have a little slip and fall or something and it can be over. When God says, hey, it's time. You've had enough time on the earth to show where your loyalty is. Come home, go to sleep, and wait on a judgment. We'll circumspect, examine your life at the judgment. And then you breathe your last. And what happens? Nothing. You feel cold. You feel your body just leaving the earth. You feel, um, that's it. Your voice goes, your breath, everything. And you just go into a complete sleep. That's the end of your chances. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of who he is, his understanding. And these are two things that you need to cling to. You heard me. Without holiness and peace with all men, nobody's going to see God. Your heart can't want to fight People just fight, just fight, knock down and you know, just destroy and hate. And you gotta have peace in your heart. You gotta have peace in your spirit. Who brings that peace in? The Prince of Peace. What is his name? Jesus Christ. Salvation is found in no one else. I don't care if your great 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 grandmother said that. There's something else. Or your great 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 granddad said there was something else. Salvation is found in no one else. No one means how many? Nobody. 
Nobody else except Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that um, without the shedding of blood, that's pure, blameless, sovereign, eternal blood. Which means that you just got to take an animal and go, ah, and yay, we're good. No. That was before Jesus came. Jesus already came 2,000 years ago. So you can't, you can't go and take any animal and just go, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to be fine. No. You're not going to be fine. The blood of animals cannot save. You see, that's why he's the foundation that's laid. He did it perfectly. All we have to do is confess him and allow him to work in us, to build us up in him, on him, for him, through him, and by him. Then you begin to really build on the rock. Then you begin to really, um, really stand strong. Because if you don't do that, beloved, then what are you going to do? What's going to happen? You're going to crumble. You're going to fall. You're going to find that if you built on... Okay, let, let me give you an example. Let's say you're... I don't know, a Buddhist and a Hindu. Or a Hindu and a Muslim. And you build your life and your love and you're so in love. But the love that you get is only filio and erotica, which is sex. And, of course, that filio has to do with marriage, okay? So, you agree to disagree. You agree to say, okay, you like idols, I like idols. You do this, I do that. You do, and you make, you make an agreement and you're like, yay, we're happy. But look how you're happy. The only way you'll be happy is if you stay away from the truth. Because in your mind, this is your truth. That is your foundation. That is your sand. God already laid a foundation that is his truth. So when he said, don't worship idols... You don't bow down to stone or wood or plastic or paper. You just don't. You don't get to say, but, um, I think, um, but this will go really good. No. Because at the end of the day, when you do that, you're giving Satan altars to dwell. Do you know that? Do you know every single altar that has idols and that kind of thing where you're not glorifying God? No, you're glorifying Satan. You're giving him a place. So you can only have that happiness within your bounds, within your boundary. That's why people get so cold and they're like, oh, we don't like these and we don't like those and we don't like these. Because if the light comes in, boom, the illusion of of uh, the illusion of the light that you created it disappears because if real light comes in if God comes in if Jesus comes in you'll have to admit that the foundation that you're built on is sand that things won't hold together and that would be things like truth because we spoke about him being truth as the cornerstone it would be like things of um holiness because holiness is only to your standards and what you understand as holiness or what you want to understand as holiness um things like love things like faith you would only have it in your standard god never said well i'm just gonna lay the foundation for heaven and you can call that foundation whatever you want you know doesn't make sense. He won't be God if he did that. 
No, he said there's no foundation that has been laid except the foundation that is Jesus Christ. That is the cornerstone. Without a cornerstone, the foundation is destroyed. So the wise man built his house on the rock, Jesus Christ, on his principles, his character, with precision of his righteousness and holiness and justice and purity and truth and all of that that we discussed. But the fool, the foolish man said, forget you. I want a beer. I want to just skin my breasts out. And I just want to wear, I just want to go like this and go like that and just... I just want to carouse. This is my foundation. Says who? Your foundation for what? For hell? Because when you build your life like that, <laughs> you know people who walk around and they expose themselves. They're like harlots, like whores, like prostitutes. They're the amount of demons that have entered in. Every time, okay, it's now 1221. Somebody check that in the Hebrew Strongest. When you expose yourself like that, when you expose yourself like that, every time a man lusts, a demon enters in. Did I not show you guys this already? Whenever a man lusts at a woman, you got the man. You got the woman. You got a demon right there. Every time he says yes. Or we're talking about uh, scandalous. We're talking about whorish. Or uh, the woman has a demon right there too. Goes straight inside. You don't understand what happened, what happened. But then you go home to your wife. And all of a sudden, you're like, you're feeling like you've been satisfied. Men or women, all of a sudden you go to your husband and you're feeling like you had sex. Demons entered in because the foundation wasn't laid. Which means that at the opportunity, just like what we did there, your walls weren't strong enough. Your um, barriers wasn't strong enough. So the demons crossed over because Christ is not that foundation. The blood of Jesus has no protection over you because you don't believe. When God said the cornerstone, he did it with so many instances. And that's just one. If you, oh, mercy, you want me to go into, okay, if you have substance abuse, whether it be alcohol, cigarettes, uh, weed, drugs, whatever, whatever you do, whatever, whatever people do, there's a demon there that's kind of like waiting for the entry. Waiting for the entry of what? What is he? What do they want? What are they waiting on? One person is pushing it and the other one is about to receive it. The demon is next to the one who is getting ready to receive it. The one who is pushing it, there's a demon there as well. That's, you know, he's like, how to say, he's like channeling it at the person that's receiving it. Now, in the spirit realm, that's why we have the mind of Christ, right? But these people don't. So what you do is that demon will wait around. And whatever, whatever, uh, how to say this? Whatever values that person has, whatever morals they have, it will go away at the intake of substance. That's where your mind becomes blurred and you get the high and you are you know you, you you giggle and you grin and you oh your mind is just like a free floating zone for demons to enter because you no longer have 
uh, sane judgment. You no longer have strong judgment. You Anything can happen. That's why girls get... aped during gender. Like, you cannot righteously learn anything because your foundation was never Christ. So... You open up, oh, yay, substance, whatever that may be, substance. And the devil says, I'm coming in with that. Jesus as the cornerstone. For example, with a Christian that is being asked to receive substance. It's a whole other ballgame. The Christian's here. The person pushing is here. Hey, have a smirk. Have a little, you know, needle. Have a little uh, spliff. Have a drink. I am not my own. My body was bought at a price paid in full by the blood of Jesus. It is the temple of God. No, thank you. I rebuke you, Satan. You see, when this person was pushing, there's a demon there. Satan tempts. There's a demon there. The person standing in Yahweh Jesus resisted the devil. And he had to go. He had to stoop and go. He had to go and go his way or just, you know, pull his hair out, whatever Satan does, okay? So, it, it's different. When Jesus is the cornerstone in whatever, yes, we'll come into moments where we slip up. We'll come into moments where we slip up. Let me give you an example. Like, okay, for instance, when I'm sleeping. Sometimes, Sometimes, if I'm really, really tired, and I don't wake up and I pray immediately, but before I fall asleep and I just knock out, okay? I already know that Jesus is mine. I know he's mine, but I slipped up. I didn't put on the armor. I didn't, but he's mine. And he knows that he's mine. He knows that I'm his. So what would happen is Satan would come and say, ha, huh? She's not wearing the armor. She fell asleep. Okay. And he's coming to war. And the way that he's coming to war is through dreams. Obviously, he's coming to fight. But let me tell you something about a time that has happened. Leviathan came as a um, 150-foot crocodile trying to snap me in half. And I kid you not, I fell asleep without praying. I knocked out. I was tired. I, I might have done the word, but I knocked out. And I just saw two hands come down like this. And hold the crocodile and rip him to shreds. <laughs> what just happened? Jesus is the stone. He is the cornerstone. Which means he has all prevalence. He has all permissions. Now, that's simple. Let's say if I slipped up and got into some temptation or sexy time, right? And got like, got me sexy time, so say poor rats. Got into some uh, kissing or touching or something, right? And let's say, let's say it's, it shouldn't have happened because it can lead to other things, right? Even though the Bible does say, hey, Resist the devil and flee. You're already there. What now? When you're like that, it's like if you're taking drugs. You get a high from it. You get a high from it. If Jesus is not the cornerstone, you're going to get straight into it. You're not even going to think twice. And it can be with, like, it can be with, Anybody. That's why you have loose girls and loose women all over the place that sleep around. Because their foundation is not Christ. For me now, I'll be like, okay. Mm. 
yeah, it might be boring or whatever. I really don't care. It It is what it is. That's it. That's the standard. The wall is lifted. The standard of the blood is lifted. But if you don't, all of a sudden you're sleeping with the person, you're sleeping with another person, and another person. You know, you're just sleeping around persons, people. You can't control. It's like when uh, men see a uh, woman grinding and whining and, you know, the kind of ridiculous that gets you on TikTok anyway. <laughs> when they see you whining and grinding in a party or whatever that way, sexually suggestive, and then they just, they have no control, so they go and they try and they pull up on that one, pull up on this one, and they try to get them in bed because they're sexually suggestive, and the demons that are next to those women, oh boy, what happened? He just got balled by a demon. He just got knocked in by a demon. Why? Because Jesus is not the cornerstone. There is no wall there that tells the devil... You can't cross. It's the difference between choosing heaven and choosing this world. He has to be the standard. And as things get crazier and crazier, as we're spiraling to his glorious appearing, it's only going to get harder. Satan is looking for every possible way and means to tempt, to seduce, to uh, annihilate. Because don't think that Satan just, oh, Satan is the party one, man. Satan is like, yeah, the rock on one. No. The reason why he wants you to get so involved is because Jesus is not your cornerstone. And if you can get distracted enough if you can get a little off track, then he could just snatch you out. Jesus is not the cornerstone. Which means it will eventually come to a point where you'll say Christ is not yours. You will forsake heaven. And I'm not just talking talk. I'm talking what is. And if you ask your mom, and if you ask your dad, and if you ask your aunties, and if you ask whoever you want to ask, whoever you want to ask, beloved, if they were being honest with themselves, tell them. Say, be honest with me. And they'll be like, yeah, eventually I had to make that choice. And I married your dad, or I married your mom. And I became this to do it. And I became that to do it. What? If you had to ask and you say, um, temptations are weak. Wait for the article. Wait for the debate. Wait for the argument, the battle, the debate. Wait for it to become a spiritual mention. Wait for it, and you will know that Satan is attacking your foundation, but he can't, because Jesus is that foundation. Or he can, because Jesus is not your foundation. Always wait. You will, you will know. You will know. It'll just be amplifying. Amplifying, amplifying. What's happening here? It's amplifying. It's just becoming more and more and more. Why? Because the devil wants to come in. And when he wants to come in, he's looking for every crack and every crevice to come in. A cornerstone, when it's laid, it has no crack. A cornerstone is a solid stone. It's a big stone that if you attach bricks to it, it stays. It's there. It's supporting the whole thing. Without Jesus in everything that you're building, it'll eventually crumble. And most people have to come to certain times in their lives where they see, okay, we need the strength of God. 
And we've been calling all kinds of names. We've been calling all sorts of stuff. And it's not working. We've been bowing down to all sorts and it's not working. We've not been building on the real foundation. Most of the times, it'll be a really bad situation, life or death, for the very stubborn ones, or maybe a healing scenario, maybe um, marriage, maybe um, children, you, you really, or maybe being depressed or oppressed or heavy, You'll really get to know where Christ is the foundation. That's what I heard the Lord say. I heard him say that he is the foundation, the chief cornerstone, that the builders of the false belief systems, the fake religions and traditions of men, that they built without. And if we don't have him in this time, in this season, we're not going to make it. It's going to crumble. Our minds are going to crumble. Our thoughts are going to crumble. Our intentions for heaven are going to crumble. Everything's going to crumble. If he's not the, the cornerstone. If he's not the rock. Again, salvation exists in no one else. Nobody. Except Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven by which men are saved. I don't care how that makes you feel. Some people don't love you enough to even tell you that. they rather see you live your life any old how, and then bury and go to hell and burn. How evil you are. How evil you are that you rather let people burn without Jesus. It's not right. I say, oh, we love you. We check for you. You're a dog and a horse and the whole farm. They don't care about you. All they care about is having company to slide down to hell with. And nobody will recognize anybody in hell. It's not a, a beer pool and, a bit, you know, a river full of beer and wine and, uh, and bikini-clad women with six-pack men walking all around and just flexing muscles and having sex and everybody just having sex everywhere. It's not that. Get that out of your head. Hell is a place where God is not. You're separated from his presence. You're burning continuously. Worms don't die. Demons are there and they torture because they are eternally there. It's a place of torment where you're separated from God forever. Which means every good thing that you thought you stood for doesn't even matter. Without Jesus, there is no differentiation between good and evil in this world. Doesn't take much to look around and see. To understand that he is the standard. The stone, the builders have rejected, has become the cornerstone. He's the only one that you'll make it to heaven through and in and by. He's the only one. I don't care how that makes you feel. I don't care if you want to mock or scoff at it. Because there are people in your life right now that you love, including your parents, mother, father, auntie, uncle, cousins, granny, grandpa, neighbors, and friends that you think love you, but they don't. 
They just want company to slide down to hell. So they don't feel guilty in making their own foundation and not stepping on God's foundation, not building on God's foundation. And there's something for you to think about. There's something for you to think about. That's what I heard the Lord saying. That's what he laid on my heart. Hide it in yours that you won't sit against him. Hide it in yours that you might have your foundation ready and able to withstand anything Yeah, I don't like disguises. I'll rip off your disguise and expose you. So, that's what I heard him saying. Hide it in your heart. And I'll see you guys again. Remember, Jesus Christ is that foundation built on him. You build on him. You're here to glorify him, not glorify self. Like Brother Mark has been... I, I don't even know if he, he, he's been sending me these videos with, um, with himself. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't send me that garbage. You're here to lift up Christ, not yourself. He wants me to come on the live, but he doesn't want me to speak about Jesus and offend anybody. I'm here to offend mankind. For Yahweh Jesus. I'm here for that. It is what it is. Jesus is the stone. He's the stone that the builders rejected. He's the foundation that's laid. Too bad if you don't like it. I'm sorry. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, believe in your heart, confess in your mouth that He's Lord and you shall be saved. You come out of yourself. Instead of collecting women all over the bloody world and you're, you're like, oh, you're for Christ, you're for Christ. No, you're not. You're for self, for selfish ambition. Believe in your heart, confess your mouth that he's Lord and you shall be saved. That's what I heard him say. Hide it in yours that you won't sit against him. Say, Jesus, wash me in your precious blood. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I forsake religion and traditions of men, every single one, that keep me from you. Thank you, God. Say, I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior and my Lord God. Be shepherd and Lord of my life, and I'll follow you all the days of my life. And you will. Peace and grace of God be with you. Perfect love of God cast out all fear. Angels before and after you at all times. Sickness, disease, and death cast away from you. I speak right now that even now you'll be led to a Bible living person that it might be well nourished in the word to stand strong on the foundation. And that you'll be led to the waters of baptism that you might be baptized by the water and the Holy Spirit. That you're not about self, but you're about God. And when you're about Him, He makes it good. I pray that you know that angels look before and after you, that heaven is rejoicing for one more saved. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. We welcome you to Water the Wine Prophetic International King of Kings Ministries. Shalom. God bless you guys. I, I see everybody who Entered in and who? Dream Vivid, not Rampasad. Hi, Yunky, I don't know. Palm Singh, Elvin, Mary, 